for this piece, I'ma explore the beautiful island of Jamaica, where we all love to spend time and vacation at. It's a place to be, no doubt. But I'm not gonna talk too much about this part at this current time. I'm gonna be taking it back a few years, talking about the gritty side of town in the Tivoli Gardens neighborhood in West Kingston, where Christopher Doodles Coke ran it with an iron fist till he got arrested and extradited back to the US in 2010 to face drug trafficking charges. He is currently serving a 23 year sentence in the US penitentiary with an expected release date of January 25th, 2029. This is a story of how him and his shower posse members became a target of the US government. In 1962, the island of Jamaica gained its independence from the United Kingdom. At that time, there was a huge disparity in the population. The wealthy were descendants of the slave owners while the poor were descendants of the slaves. Many of the poor flocked to the poverty-ridden areas and ghettos like Kingston, living without basic amenities like paved roads or sanitation and seen in the more opulent areas of the island. Area leaders dubbed as Dons in the 70s started to emerge out of these neighborhoods. Their main objectives were to regulate order and structure within their environment. For the most part, they were supported or affiliated with the two major political parties on the island the Jamaican Labor Party, JLP, and the People's National Party, PNP, in exchange for their influence of votes from their neighborhoods. The areas the Dons controlled were known as the garrisons because of the way they were defending like forts with many blockade entrances. There was a huge rival brewing between the Dons from the JLP and the Dons from the PNP, which led to intense violence on the island. Tivoli Gardens in West Kingston was aligned with the JLP and it also elected their officials for four decades. It was dubbed the mother of all garrisons by Jamaica's defense forces. The violence in the 80s was so bad, many left the island for greener pastures in the US, UK, and Canada. The ones affiliated with the Tivoli Garden that migrated to the US formed a group dubbed the Shower Posse in New York a name derived from their repetition for showering their enemies with bullets, while the rival PNP garrison, who also migrated out west, formed the Spangler Posse. The Shower Posse U.S. operations were headed by Vivian Blake, while in Jamaica, it was controlled by Lester Lloyd Coke, also known as Jim Brown, Christopher Doodle's father. He was the dawn of Tivoli Gardens. The shower posse spread rapidly across the U.S., building a stronghold in Miami and expanding to cities including Los Angeles, Kansas City, and Chicago, building a name for themselves in the underbelly. They also had some connections in London, and they lived up to their name and reputation by defending their operations with full-on violence, according to news reports. In the 80s and the early 90s, the posse was blamed for more than a thousand murders in the U.S. In late 1984, five people are executed in a Miami crack house. One, a pregnant woman, is found in a praying position as if pleading for her life. Investigators charge this slaughter was the handiwork of Jamaican posses that killed 1,400 people around the nation during the four-year investigation. Among arrests that began yesterday were 34 members of the Miami-based Shower Posse, so named because they rained bullets on their enemies. These people are absolutely the most vicious organized crime group in the United States today. What's interesting is that Mr. Lester Lloyd Coke, a.k.a. Jim Brown, was raised in a PMP supporting Dan Am Town neighborhood and was an enforcer for them before he flipped to JLP after he was left for dead by his comrades after being wounded at 19 in a gun battle. JLP doctors from the Tivoli Gardens saved his life. In 1976, Mr. Coke, a.k.a. Jim Brown, took shots at the one and only Bob Marley and his wife after PMP attempted to advertise a Marley Peace concert as a party event. In 1984, it was reported that he had killed seven defectors of the JLP, which ultimately made him the boss of the shower posse. Under his ruling, 
he took care of the poor in his territory while also terrorizing anyone who dared to cross him. There's a particular incident that happened where a taxi driver had verbally berated Lester after a minor motor vehicle accident. The driver apparently didn't realize who he was until it was too late. After realizing what he had done, the driver ran to Denham Town Police Station for protection, but he was allegedly dragged out of the station by Lester and his posse members who then stabbed and shot him to death. Lester was charged for the murder, but was acquitted because no witness would dare to testify against him. There was another incident Jim Brown and his posse members went into neighboring community of Wilton Garden, also referred to as Rema because they had complained about lack of protection since they were the first line of defense from attacks by Arnett Gardens. Twelve people from Rema were killed as a result in what was dubbed at the time the Rema killings. Soon after, an arrest warrant was issued for Jim Brown, but he fled to the U.S. briefly but had to return back three years later because the shower posse in the U.S. were becoming a target of the U.S. government due to all the havoc that they were causing in the country. Upon his arrival back to Jamaica, he was picked up on the outstanding warrant and again had to go on trial for the Rema killings. The trial yielded the same results as the witness and the case changed the story leading to him being acquitted. When it was announced in the Supreme Court that Jim Brown was freed, dozens of supporters gave a prolonged gun salute in front of the courthouse, leaving cops, judges, lawyers, and members of the public cowering in fear. The crowd then lifted Jim Brown on their shoulders and carried him away triumphantly into the Tivoli Gardens. In 1990, Les Lloyd Coke, a.k.a. Jim Brown, and other members of his posse were indicted by the U.S. Department of Justice, and Coke was arrested by the ATF, U.S. Marshals, and Jamaican authorities. He was put in general penitentiary in Kingston to await extradition to the United States on drug trafficking and murder charges. In 1992, Coke's daughter, also known as Mumpy, was executed in the hell of gunfire along with her husband. A few months later, his eldest son, Mark Coke, was shot and killed while riding his motorcycle in St. Andrews. On the day his son was supposed to be buried, Mr. Coke, aka Jim Brown, was still waiting on extradition to the U.S. in a Jamaican cell. He was killed in a mysterious fire at his prison and his adopted son, Christopher Dudas Coke, took over the operation from there on. Christopher Coke, also known as Doodles, was born March 13, 1969 in Kingston and was raised by the top shot of Mr. Lester Lloyd Coke. Even though they lived in a rough Kingston neighborhood, they were a big fish in a small pond who had wealth from their alleged drug trades and rackets and he was able to attend private school, but he was still sucked into the lifestyle he witnessed through his father in the shower posse. He was eventually thrust into power when he was only 23 years old after the demise of his siblings and his pops. Unlike his father, Jim Brown, he was business savvy and more of a Robin Hood than an aggressor towards people. He developed himself as a community leader in the Tivoli Gardens. He distributed money to the area's poor, created employment, and set up community centers to help out children and others. He gained widespread support in the community to the extent that the Jamaican police had to seek permission from his organization before entering his neighborhood. He was well loved in the community as he created order and punished those who committed antisocial crimes such as rape and theft against his people publicly. On May 4th, 2005, Doodle's brother, also named Christopher Coke, but was referred to as Chris Royal or Royal Blend, was also shot and killed after going to war with the security forces at the Crossroad Police Station. Jamaica that year had the highest homicide per capita in the world after it had reached a rate of 62.5 homicide per 100,000 people. Gunmen from Tivoli Gardens 
were accused of many of the killings directed at rival garrisons. But the dawn of the Tivoli Gardens himself, Doodles, was operating openly, unfazed, even opening up two companies, the Presidential Clique and Incomparable Enterprises. Being that his family, specifically his pops Jim Brown, had already been on the U.S. radar for all the violence that occurred allegedly from the hands of the shower posse on U.S. soil, he finally indicted Doodles in 2009 for racketeering, conspiracy to traffic in large quantities of marijuana and cocaine into the U.S., and conspiracies to commit assault in aid of racketeering for his approval of the stabbing attack of a weed dealer in New York City. According to U.S. prosecutors, Coke masterminded the trafficking of tons of marijuana and cocaine over almost two decades since he took over in 1992, with the Bronx, New York being one of his main bases. But he also built a significant network in Toronto, Canada. It couldn't directly link him to any murders in the U.S. The U.S. was looking to extradite doodles back to the States to face the charges levied against them who were first met with resistance from the Prime Minister Bruce Golden of the JLP. He took issue to the wiretaps that the U.S. had made of Doodles because he wasn't in the U.S., but in Jamaica. Essentially, the U.S. was playing Big Brother, snooping into another country's phone conversation. This opposition to the arrest and extradite Doodles resulted in outrage and condemnation from the opposition parties and U.S. officials who saw it as a corrupt system that politicians were aiding and assisting criminals. In May of 2010, the government finally caved in to the heavy pressure since their whole economy was dependent on tourism from the U.S. and they put out an arrest order for doodles. During a time, the island went into a heavy chaos and unrest as security forces were accused of widespread human rights abuses, including shooting of civilians. Rising from one of Kingston's poorest neighborhoods, Tivoli Gardens. <laughs> On the third day of clashes with armed supporters of Christopher Dudas Koch, government forces broke through street barricades. Local media said the soldiers and police were going from house to house in search of coke, confiscating mobile phones as they went. A number of weapons have been found. Prime Minister Bruce Golding has vowed to arrest coke, wanted in the US on drug and arms trafficking charges. Golding had been under increasing pressure to execute an extradition warrant for coke, whose organization based in the capital slums is a strong backer of Golding's governing Labour Party. The clashes have forced most businesses in the capital centre and all the city's schools to shut down, and news of the declared state of emergency has triggered cancellations by tourists, a mainstay of the island's economy. The government has not said how many of the reported civilian fatalities were Koch's gunmen or innocent bystanders. Doodles men fought hard with security forces, shielding them, but they were eventually outmatched by the government. Doodles was captured and arrested in a vehicle, wearing a wig disguised as a woman, riding along with a reverend. He said he was heading to the U.S. Embassy to turn himself in, fearing he would be assassinated by Jamaican security forces. Doodles was eventually extradited back to the U.S., where he was tried in the Southern District of New York. He reached a deal a week after the judge ruled that the tapes of his bug phone conversation in which he discusses smuggling marijuana, cocaine, and weapons could be played in court. He would have also faced several witnesses who prosecutors said would testify that he ran a small and violent army known as the Shower Posse because of his tactics of showering his enemies with bullets to control the smuggling of drugs through Jamaica. Prosecutors said they will produce evidence that Doodles himself personally killed several people including cutting up a man with a chainsaw. With all the evidence mounted against him and the fact that they had the wiretaps on him, on August 30th, 2011, he decided to plead guilty, telling the court in his own words, I'm pleading guilty because I am, essentially saving a name and any embarrassment that would have come out if those tapes were played and he showed any links to political figures on the island. Safe to safe doodles kept it 100 
and the politicians back home in Jamaica were relieved that it was all over. On June 8, 2012, Doodles was sentenced to 23 years in prison. He is now being held at the Federal Correctional Institution in Fort Dix with a release date of January 25th, 2029. And that was the end of the run of the shower posse. So I do documentaries. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a video on this guy named Christopher Doodles. Doodles, cool. Yeah. Uh, cool, yeah. What do you think about him? What, what is your... What do you what is your perspective about doodles? Well, the little I know about him is that he was kind of a Robin Hood kind of a person for Scully guy. Mm. He kept order, mm. maintained peace. Even though he wasn't that, he was one of the not the first dan, but one of the top dons in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. yeah. The illegal drug trade made it very big, even though he never traveled to the US. But oh, he made a lot of money, he maintained all in some parts of Kinsa. Because I can tell you, I used to drive a delivery truck for a company. Okay. And I would go into downtown Kingston from Montego Bay to drop goods off. Okay. When Dudus was around, I could, if, if I get a COD, like cash on delivery, mm -hmm. I could collect any amount of money in Kingston and not be afraid. Really? As a truck driver, yeah. You, I would collect two, three, four, five, top five million dollars worth of goods I just dropped. I could collect the cash and I have it because Chinese, we deliver to the Chinese store there. Mm -hmm. They don't like to do checks because they don't really leave paper trade. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That's how they lose taxes. So if you go with a delivery and they're, they're going to give you money if it means they have to give you coins <laughs> to make it work, mm -hmm. that's what you're getting. <laughs> Dudos, when mm -hmm. Dudos got extradited to the US, the you can't Chinese do that. Man warned, Chinese themselves warned to not collect any money if you want to live mm. or if you don't want to get robbed. Because if they come to rob you, they, they resist, they're going to kill you. Yeah, kill. They have guns. So dude was ma maintaining the orders, yeah, and he kept he kept all the killers and the robbers in check. In check, yeah. So I said that was a good man. You know, yeah. that's what we consider yeah. we consider yeah. a guy. You know, Robin Hood. To yes. me, I, you know, U.S. We like to oppose our own uh, agenda and our own laws and other people. They said he, you know, you said he never stepped foot on American soil, but they locked him up. They said he sold all the drugs over there. They said he sold drugs in the U.S. So he got extradited for that. If you rape, if if when do this was around, if you commit a rape in Tivoli, guy. I read that you used to beat him. <laughs> some sometimes it can result in you in, in death. Mm. If he sees, if he thinks that what you did merit you dying, send these boys for you, mm. and you're done. And it's, if somebody gets robbed in that area and Dudus finds out. In like short order, the person who got robbed once in, you, you can locate that person and then they get it back their brother. Wow. That's that that's how orderly it was in Little Sons around. Mm. Now Kingston downtown, some parts is a free for all. So nobody nobody's in charge, nobody took over to do the spot. That, that's why the gangs now in Kingston are are, are reigning now. Clansman gang, all these one other gangs. They're not reigning because Dudus is not around anymore. Mm. Nowadays, most of the dons that are left on the island try to stay under the radar as much as possible to not attract any U.S. attention. Until today, people still love and respect Doodles on the streets of Jamaica. Let me know what y'all think of Doodles in the shower posse in the comments below. It's on now TV. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Peace.